You should be nice to everyone. No, not everyone. Well, let's see what the Bible has to say on this episode of Inverse. On this episode entitled, The Sin of Treating Someone Well, we're looking at the book of, of James, and in chapter 2, we look at what James has to say about treating some people well, and then and, and we'll look at some of those, some of those <laughs> dynamics. Uh, my name is Justin Kim. You're on Inverse, and in the studio, we have Jonathan and Sebastian and Callie. And Callie, a special thanks, uh, author of oh. our quarter on the Ooh. book of, of James. Only if they like it. And, is that true? Uh, and <laughs> I'm if just you kidding. don't like it, that's your problem. If you like it, you can send comments to her. And you can also <laughs> download, download the Bible Study Guide at inversebible.org, and you can get books there and podcasts, which is probably the one that you're watching now and all sorts of other accoutrements to help you in your study in the book of oh, James. Okay. Let's go to chapter 2, and John, if you can pray for us as we read Holy Scripture. Yes, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much for inspiring James to write this letter to the church, mm -hmm. and that it has been preserved throughout the ages for us and many millions other Christians throughout time. Uh, and it speaks into our lives. We just pray that it will speak again right now to us mm -hmm. here in the studio and to those watching um, and those studying right now. We just thank you that your spirit has something in store for us today. And we uh, want to receive that. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, James chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And Sebastian, please. Absolutely. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place, and say to the other man, you stand there, or sit here at my footstool, have you not shown partiality among yourselves? and become judges with evil thoughts. Okay, we'll stop there. There's more to read, but let's just take a small chunk at a time mm -hmm. and, and progress through this chapter. Um, and Callie, what have we looked at in chapter one? And I know we've uh, talked about a lot of stuff, but it seems a little bit like, do you, do you, do you, do you? It is kind of like that. And um, it is that, <laughs> but there's also, we've been looking at, there's a line through that that James is getting mm -hmm. at that leads us to, to chapter two. Um, help us out, What's uh, set us yeah. up here. Well, I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure what the line is that you're looking for, but <laughs> in chapter one, it is talking about how things are not as they seem. Mm -hmm. And so, That's the line. okay, yeah, yes, <laughs> got it. All right, so, and then, we start even in chapter two of like, this is, he's talking about things you do when you see things not as they actually are. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is a manifestation in your life. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think if, if James were alive today, he'd just, he'd just be saying to the church, like, hey, let's be real. Mm -hmm. And then just be like, hey, you're doing da 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 da. Let's be real. Like, mm -hmm. you got a da 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 da. Let's be real. Da 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 da. And like, each, each thing seems random, mm -hmm. but that is the line that this is real religion, practical religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's founded, I mean, and we're going to be talking about it later. Him and James, yeah. James and Paul are exactly on the same page, mm -hmm. but James is focusing they just talk on one end. Yeah, on, on, on a real end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here in ver uh, chapter 2, verses 1 and 4, we have that word partiality is repeated. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on in the section here, 1 through 4? He says, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, some people put a full stop there, and that makes no sense. you got to yeah. keep reading the, the verse <laughs> right? Yeah. with partiality. Callie, what's going on? I think it's interesting, like without the explanation that mm -hmm. James gives, mm -hmm. if I just saw verse 1, I would think he's talking about, like, don't assume who needs to hear the gospel like holding the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. with partiality. So it's kind of like, oh, yeah, so like anybody can be saved. That's what he's talking about. Got it. Mm -hmm. Understood. Mm -hmm. That's not really what he's talking mm -hmm. about. So but he goes mm -hmm. into it and he says, what would this look like? So for, you know, because, and he gives an example of you giving somebody who looks rich a better seat than somebody who looks poor, mm -hmm. that is holding the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ with partiality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he uses this very spiritual language right, of holding faith from somebody, but it has very it has like basic mm -hmm. implications at a dinner party. Mm -hmm. And so it just shows again how James is like, yeah, lofty things, I'm gonna show you exactly 
what I'm talking about and how you did this last Thursday. Mm -hmm. Well, there's <laughs> yeah. some people that are watching there and they're like, dude, that just makes us so common sense. I don't do that. I don't. Th that's what ancient people used to do and, and, and give the best seats to the richest people. I'm like, yeah. well, I don't do that. How, rebuke us, Sebastian. How, how, <laughs> what, what are some, rebuke how do we Sebastian. do that today in a modern context? Well, you, context? you have to take the principle of what James is saying and apply it to broader context, right? Mm -hmm. I may not give preferential treatment to the wealthy, but I may give preferential treatment to the pretty or the attractive. Okay. Mm -hmm. or I may yeah. give preferential treatment to the emeritus and those who have accolades behind them. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, this guy is the one who invented da 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 da. Yes. Or I may give preferential treatment to my family, right? People who I know who are my people, right? And then people yeah. who are not my people in my tribe, mm -hmm. No, 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 you're, you're basically excluded. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at um, especially how social media and the way that technology pushes us in this way is, oh yeah, these are the things I like to listen to, these are the people that I affirm, these are the people that I respect and that I honor, and therefore I'm gonna give this sort of preferential deferment even to their faults and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna defer even to their character clear issues because mm -hmm. that doesn't matter because you're this, mm -hmm. but you, who basically are great in everything else except this one thing, because you're not a part of this group of people, mm -hmm. I'm gonna hammer this character flaw, mm -hmm. right? As if it is the worst possible issue in your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think we see what James is, is dealing with on a personal practical level, but even on a broader system, systematic level as a, as a sort of generation, right? A zeitgeist, the spirit of the age that's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jonathan. Uh, I like in verse four, uh, it says here, have you not shown when you do all these things that Sebastian talked about, have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Mm. Uh, you know, so the, the 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 danger is that we we treat mis you know we treat people differently, and as you said, we we even you know overlook their faults if they're rich and famous and whatever it is. Yes. Uh, because we're just happy to hear at church or whatever it is. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, and, but then in the way we treat them. What does that communicate to others? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, w w what does that teach? Maybe someone who's also a seeker coming to church or whatever assembly it is and, and sees how you treat this person, but then you completely overlook this person. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we are judging with evil thoughts. Uh, we are uh, really developing in our own minds uh, different categories uh, in, our, in, our, in, in the way we live out our faith. Mm -hmm. And that is dangerous because Jesus, you know, exemplified to us that there really is only one category. Mm -hmm. You're a sinner in need of grace and salvation, mm -hmm. no matter what your social status mm -hmm. is. And that's why he hung out with the rich and the poor, mm -hmm. uh, the, the people who no one wanted to be with and the people that everyone wanted to be with. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think Jesus has a lot to teach us here. Uh, and James points that out that this was an issue in the early church. And I think it has, has become clear it is also an issue today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think all this is just when we create hierarchies that God didn't create. Yep. And so it can be about money, it can be about attractive levels yes. of whatever it is. And it's Except for what, what the quality is that yeah. you value and then exactly. you create that, that hierarchy based on, you know, I'm a short person, so height must be it, or yeah. I'm a poor person, or whatever it is. But it's, right, uh, right. yeah, we, we create that. Yes. Because true. I think it's easy to read this and be like, oh, like I, treat, I treat my poor and yeah. wealthy friends alike. Yeah, I'm yeah, fine. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. But, and and that, is, that is how I immediately think, because I'm like, I do treat my poor and wealthy friends like but there's other ways that I qualify things and it's still like I think oh, what Sebastian said really resonates too of you let things slide mm. with people you like better mm. yeah. but then people you don't like as much you're just like this is just an opportunity to tell you how I really feel about you mm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. you just you hammer them with stuff because and you you and we can like over spiritualize it too like well I'm trying to help them but it's like that's not the actuating principle in your life right now mm -hmm. it is not love mm -hmm. it is a condemnation masked with some kind of Mm -hmm. spiritual something. Mm -hmm. So anytime we have that hierarchy, it doesn't have to be like seating arrangements, right? It's it's how we talk over email. It's it's how we mm. have a conversation and who we give attention to. Mm -hmm. It's whose opinions we elevate and whose we, dis, who's we, we dismiss. That's mm -hmm. right. Like that is a hierarchy. Yeah. Um, and so I think, yeah, just kind of, I think James is really, James is so practical that he's like, I'm gonna give you a 3D example, but then don't limit it to the 3D yeah. example. And you know, yeah. to even build on that, right, we, we can even think about practical, basic things in life, like gender, yeah. right? I remember walking into a meeting and I had a female colleague and she was like trying to lobby for a particular change. And it was like, she's in this meeting lobbying for this change and nobody's listening, right? They're like, yeah, I don't think so. I don't see it this way. 
And then the next day I come into the meeting with her and I'm like, yeah, this is how I see it. I think this is a really great change. And I wasn't in the previous meeting. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that this was even a thing. I just showed up to the meeting and was like, well, based on what we're saying, why don't we do this? Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, well, you know, you do have a great point. And so all of a sudden, mm. after the meeting, my wow. female colleague is like, I literally recommended the exact same change. Mm -hmm. yeah. But because Sebastian is a guy, right, he comes in or because Sebastian is African-American and he comes in, we will actually listen to this suggestion. Mm -hmm. But because it came from this person who they're discounting because of her gender or because she was non-African-American, therefore her suggestion is no longer as valid. Mm -hmm. And to say that you're a Christian and to apply this level of partiality, right? James is saying those two things don't mix, right? These should not belong, mm -hmm. right? Going yeah. back to the old Sesame Street thing, which one does not belong, <laughs> right? <clears throat> this one does not belong, and you should, you should separate that. And mm -hmm. I think we do the hierarchy even with gender, even with yeah. race and economic classes. Sesame Street is a old uh, and a current children's uh, <laughs> programming, old. for those of you who may not know the cultural reference there. Yeah. Uh, we, we live in culture with uh, with, with, with settings, mm -hmm. right? Social settings mm -hmm. yeah. that are part of the system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And depending on which part of the society you're from, and you're right, like, oh, you're a male. Man, I got to pay attention to you. Oh, you're a female. Oh, I can keep my shoulder to you. I don't have to. Yeah. Or you're Caucasian. I need to listen to you. You're African. You're not. And yeah. whatever, it may be race, it may be gender, it may be, and we can talk about what those things yeah. are. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are two dangers where one is that as Christians, we must be all about changing those settings in society. Mm -hmm. We can't. Yeah. We can't change society mm -hmm. without the grace of God and the power of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So it's clear yeah. you guys it's were like, probably like, like, wait. Uh, Justin? And so there's a, there's a temptation to do that <laughs> in a secular sense mm -hmm. through yeah. politics, through the like, like, push, pushing a force yep. to change those settings. And here the Bible says those things need to be changed. 100%. Yep. But they can't be changed through the world through worldly standards, they must be changed yeah. through the gospel of Christ. Oh, man. So if our settings are, you know, if, we're, if, if I am so wanting to be educated, mm -hmm. I see from a hierarchy of education, yep. right? Mm -hmm. If I'm yep. wanting justice, I see through a setting of, of, mm -hmm. of justice. But if I see Jesus, right, shouldn't that just naturally change all of our settings Mm -hmm. uh, just, just organically, you know, or be, be, be well, you, you the hope, beginning of change. You hope that you it hope will that because organically it, do that. It is possible to it is possible to pretend uh, uh, that I'm sure. treating everyone equal. Yes, yes. And I've done this my, my my own experience as well. But the beauty is when we say, okay, when we start looking at people the way Jesus looks at them, when I start looking myself the way Jesus looks at me, I I can you know gain that meekness and humility and say, okay, God, you know help me to treat everyone equally, help me to, to listen to them equally, yeah. and, and to gain that blessing that comes through putting aside uh, those categories that we have made for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, beautiful things can take place in the church yeah. and in our lives. So Jonathan, yeah. hold that thought. We want to listen to what you have to say. We value <laughs> your opinion. You have to take a break right now. Appreciate so that. stay with us. My name is Justin Kim, and you're on Inverse. We've been talking a little bit about the social social settings that the world places upon us. And as Christians, do we play with those social settings mm -hmm. or do we play with rules of our own? Or I should say rules that God gives us or the, the supernatural power that God gives us. So Jonathan, what were you, uh, just to tidy up your thought there before yeah. I interrupt you. <laughs> forgive me for my interruption. We value you. No, no, I appreciate that so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just saying that it's possible to pretend. Uh, as a Christian, we know we should treat everyone, you know, mm -hmm. the yes. same. Uh, but when we truly let God uh, help us in, 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 in taking away these categories that we make for ourselves, while we might be, you know, afraid of being seen with certain people or, or we want others to see us with certain people, mm -hmm. um, when, we take, when we put that aside, uh, then God can really do a beautiful things. He can bring together people that uh, in a worldly context would never hang out together, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he can then make something really fruitful out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, relationships can be built and bridged uh, through, you know, over whatever uh, social differences we have uh, or gender, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then he can show through that true religion, show through that true love. Like Jesus said, um, you know, by, by your love, you know, you, you will they will know that you are my disciples. Mm -hmm. I believe that that show, you know, and then you, you see other scriptures that talk about every nation, tongue, and tribe, every 
class. We will all be uh, together um, in the kingdom. And so uh, that I think we have a, a powerful uh, am admonition here to, to, s to set aside these things, that uh, these classes that we make for ourselves, these yeah. categories. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if we do, God's going to create something beautiful and show that we are all one in Christ and we're all on the same level in, in the eyes of God. Amen, mm -hmm. amen, amen. Smash, you want to add to that? Yeah. In present in the book of James are people who are being persecuted because of their faith, mm. right? And because it differs from the Roman belief that the emperor is a god and you should be worshiping and bowing down to him. But no, we bow down to Jesus. So it's ironic, right, that here you are in a position of persecution because there's partiality against you, mm -hmm. right? You don't get the same rights. <laughs> yeah. You don't get the same yeah. benefits. Yeah. Yeah. You're being mistreated. Right. And now you're going to turn around within your own. I'm going to do it too. Right. I'm going to yeah. do it within our yeah. own community. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so we even have to add to that category of things, right? Even the religious categories, right? Mm -hmm. And how we treat people who are of a different faith or within. Because yeah. I remember, yeah. you know, the, the feeling of like when you, when, when coming from atheism and into the church, it was like people were willing to drive 50 miles out of their way to make sure I made it to church. <laughs> right. As an unbeliever, it's like, oh, I'll pick you up and don't worry about it, man. And don't, no gas money, you know, this and that and the third. And it's like you get baptized and it's like now you're a member. It's like, hey, man, such a Sebastian needs a ride. Yeah, no, I can't make it. <laughs> That's like 30 miles out of the way. And you're like, what? Like, what happened? Like, mm -hmm. you know, when I was lost, right? <laughs> you know, you know, drowning deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, right? <laughs> People were like, we'll we, will, we will do whatever it takes, right? Now that I'm in, it's like, like yeah. oh, nah, bro. He's only, he's three miles out the way. Nah, I ain't picking that brother up. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I need to get to Sabbath school, right? Well, James calls us out on this hypocrisy. Yeah. He yeah. calls us hypocrisy. He says in verse five, he says, listen, my dear beloved brother, listen. <laughs> Has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Mm -hmm. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into courts? Mm. Do they not blaspheme that no noble name by which you are called? Yeah. So the system that you're playing into isn't really even in your favor anyway. <laughs> you're literally That's hurting right. yourself. <laughs> well, so what in the world? And it's like, listen, my beloved brother. <laughs> <laughs> <Listen>. <laughs> Yeah, I think verses five, um, oh, six and seven is just his appeal to like, this doesn't even make logical sense. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you sucking up to the people who literally mm -hmm. drag you into court? Mm -hmm. And they, dis they dishonor me, they dishonor you, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, and even these, these hierarchies that we set up, if it's rich or if it's levels of attraction, like something can happen to you and you're no longer as attractive. And like, so then you just lost your entire self worth mm -hmm. and you lost all of your, you lost everything. Your dignity. Because yeah. all of your value was in something that's transient right yeah and so same thing with wealth all those things that we create our hierarchies by mm -hmm. all of them can be lost mm -hmm. and so you're setting up something that can hurt you in the long run mm -hmm. which is crazy right when you think about the idea that Jesus right is the person we worship we love mm -hmm. we give adoration no sacrifice is too great for him and yet he was poor mm. He lacked all these different things, right? right. So there's also... And there also was nothing, he wasn't attractive, right? Exactly, no like comeliness that we should desire yeah, him. exactly. So here he's like, ah, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests. <laughs> and to me, that's just the, the greatest contrast of Jesus and who he is. Mm -hmm. It's like Peter's like, yeah, hey, honey, I quit my job, no longer fishing. Found the Messiah. Can he sleep on the couch tonight? <laughs> yeah. It's like, so he's God's son, but he ain't got a place to sleep? Mm. And yep. the contrast of how they could not accept Jesus mm -hmm. as the Son of God because of how he came. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because their anticipation is he's going to come in this class. Yeah, this yeah, maybe, maybe this isn't a good question, but do you, think, do you think that Jesus came to invert these hierarchies? Or do you think he came to break down the hierarchies? Or this is an abstract question that doesn't even matter. Um, <laughs> like he I, just, I, Oh, nope. Jesus is the top, low, <laughs> like what? Uh, you guys have an internal, inter okay, so Sebastian, uh, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all a little confused here. Uh, I, think, um, I think the hierarchies and the uh, philosophical concepts of life and all these things that we have in this world, the way that this world runs, to a large degree, if not to the most part, is an expression of the sinful human heart. Uh, and, you know, individually and then collectively, as a group of people, we have this. And so Jesus... Uh, and the kingdom of God, the principles of God's of, of, of love and truth are, are the way they are, but they are radically different to the way we do life. So he came so, to demolish and to reconstruct. But just by, sh yeah, exactly. He, he, by showing up, he, he shows 
you know, this is not the way of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it exemplifies that by living a life. This is why I'm so thankful that Jesus did not just sent the Word of God, He also showed up Himself mm -hmm. and, and exemplified what that life looks like. And then, of course, offers through grace and, and the Gospel and, mm -hmm. you know, us the opportunity to truly be transformed to also live in that mm -hmm. same way. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I love this conversation, but let's continue to our uh, next section and see how the, how, this, how the flow, I'm all about the flow and how it goes here. <laughs> Verse 11, mm -hmm. here he says, James, if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love, the lo mm -hmm. love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. But if you show partiality, we see that word again, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Mm. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet stumble in one point, he's guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you don't commit ad adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the mm. law. So speak and do so, uh, so do, as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Okay, mm. so so help me here. I mean, we were, we were <laughs> doing good, and now we're talking about judgment and mercy and then now murdering people. Like, well, help me with the flow, Kelly. I think one thing to keep in mind is often God and so the, the authors of, of Scripture and et cetera, et cetera, those people, they condemn <laughs> sins yes. harshly and we condemn other sins harshly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he is going in on partiality. Yes. Have, we, have you ever like sat around gossiping with someone like, man, she really struggles with partiality. Like favoritism is wild. <laughs> like it's crazy. Right. <laughs> like you don't do that True. because nobody cares. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's annoying, mm -hmm. but you're like, yeah, she's kind of a jerk because she is nicer to these people. Now those people are like, whatever. But other people are like, no, they slept together. Mm -hmm. Right. You know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that is the worst thing. Yeah. But here, mm -hmm. James is showing like, yeah, you can say all these things like, oh, I don't murder. I don't commit adultery. But he says it explicitly, if you show partiality, mm -hmm. you commit sin mm -hmm. and you are convicted mm -hmm. by the right. law as a transgressor. Mm -hmm. Like he is saying, this is not something that's like, oh, well, it'll be all of our struggles. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay. No, <laughs> it is not okay. And so you- So he's elevating partiality to the level of yeah, the commandments. Exactly. Because it's like, this is, I mean, you are essentially robbing someone of their value. You're saying like you do not matter as much as somebody else, and yes. I, you do not have the value that God gave you. You do not have the value that I have. Yeah, that's what you're yes. saying. Because like, it breaks the principle of not loving your neighbor. Yeah, I mean you are in a way, it's, it's, it is murder, right? Like you're right. murdering somebody's identity and like their value, and so. I think he's, he's elevating it to show that, but also he's showing you can't pick and choose. Mm -hmm. You can't comfort yourself and be like, I mean, I don't kill people. Yeah. I don't sleep around. Like, I'm all right. Yeah. But I just and like I, some people better than others. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. to Kelly's point, he's trying to get us out of the mindset of being, well, ironically, right, being so practical as an author that James is, yeah. is that, yeah, see, don't get caught up in the application of these religious principles that you start forgetting that there's behind, behind these practical things I'm saying, there is a broader principle mm -hmm. that you can still violate, even though it doesn't fit the, oh, I didn't commit adultery, mm -hmm. I did not commit murder. Right. No, no, the spirit behind those commandments, yep. which is again, going back to what we discussed mm -hmm. in episode one about how these high level principles, love your neighbor as yourself, have practical implications yes. in everyday mm. decisions. Mm -hmm. So you just look at it and say, well, I never saw that as anti-Christian because you're missing the critical principle, yep. mm -hmm. which is why your practice is off, mm -hmm. which is why I have to write to you and speak specifically to partiality. Mm -hmm. But if you never demonstrated that, we would never have had to apply this principle in this way. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think the, the, the elevation is more so to say, if I'm driving and someone's telling me like, well, Sebastian, you know, the principle, the speed limit is 55, but I'm like, it's snowing, <laughs> low visibility, the roads are slick, I'm not doing 55. Mm. Yeah. Because that's not safe, right? Not because that's the speed limit. 
And this is what James is like, stop trying to say, I'm going to do 55 no matter the conditions. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do 55 no matter what, because that's what the law says. Mm -hmm. So you can't convict me and say I was speeding. About the spirit of the law. But it's like, mm -hmm. no, bro, the point. point of this thing is safety, yeah. right? Yes. And then when yeah. you go off the road, what are you going to tell the officer? I was doing 55. <laughs> I think what the, the people that James is writing to are struggling with, and probably all of us today, is, is it's, a heart, it's a heart issue. Yeah. Uh, we are partial because we want to gain something. Mm -hmm. I'm partial because, you know, I want uh, to, the, to the rich person, you know, as he mentions, because I want to be mm -hmm. affiliated with that person, maybe get something out of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, or I'm I'm not hanging out with a poor person because I'm gaining uh, by keeping my reputation by not hanging out with them. To use his example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do this in many other ways. But that th that is a selfish attitude. That's why I say it's a heart issue. And that's where you know, by the grace of God, when God, you know, when we let Him into our hearts, Jesus can transform and, as you said, turn it upside down. His principle, bring that into our lives of the principle of selflessness. I care about your value. I care about everyone, uh, and I want to uplift them. I don't care about what what you know people might think of me. I care about helping others, no yeah. matter where they are in their journey, no matter what they have or don't have. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's where, where that transformation is so essential for our Amen. lives. Amen. Amen. We're remaining 10 seconds on the <laughs> clock. Kelly. Last thing, verse 12. verse 12. So speak and so do as those who will be ju judged by the law of liberty. Yes. The law of liberty is a law of principles that can be seen in every single part of our lives. And it's the law of love that, as Sebastian said, like it, it should permeate everything and it should adjust to mm -hmm. all of our situations. Mm -hmm. Our prayer request for all of us in the studio and hopefully for mm -hmm. all of you is not to commit the sin of adultery and murder, but also partiality. Hopefully mm -hmm. that's your prayer and sincere prayer. I know it's mine. Uh, thanks for joining us. God bless you as we continue our study in the book of James. We'll see you next week here in Inverse.